Well, officially, Bafti's back on the team. Officially, but uh, never happened. <laughs> he's going to Argentina. He's going to have his little tea. Just chill. <laughs> be with the family. Have some churrasco. <laughs> Bro's going to have a good time at home. You don't home. think he misses his apartment in Fort Lee, New Jersey? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I don't think anybody misses that. Literally. I'm going to bet the whole hundred dollars. I'm putting a bet right now. If you tag along, just know that we do not promote betting. <laughs> is going on episode 36 right 36 we, we did the math because we've been complaining about the season one season two we're confusing people people think we've only been around for 14 episodes so 36 it, episodes it's only like double that it's not even that crazy <laughs> <laughs> um we're gonna do something a little different today because we already know the results a lot of people know the results but we'll get into the results later but first we got some exciting off-season news some exciting Dati news. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your Dati are? Well, officially, Dati's back on the team. Officially, but um, never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Let's a man can dream, all right? Maybe he's, away, like, maybe he's like, I miss soccer a little bit. Maybe I want to play a little bit. of. Maybe I'm a little tired of football. Maybe I'm here to play some Bro, soccer. He's going to Argentina. He's going to have his little tea. Just chill. <laughs> be with the family. Have some churrasco. <laughs> Bro's going to have a good time at home. You don't home. think he misses his apartment in Fort Lee, New Jersey? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I don't think anybody misses that. Um... <laughs> So if, if you haven't heard, so there was a, a social media post by Girona, like thanking players that are eventually going to leave or like that it's done for them. Mm -hmm. And Tati was one of them. Everybody got excited like, oh, OK, he's leaving. Does that mean he's coming back to us? We kind of know that's not happening. But well, yeah, I mean, technically, there's a loan out. I mean, the loan's over. Technically, he, he signed the five year extension of NYCFC. But uh, we've heard from multiple sources that Dati is not looking to play at MLS. You know, he thinks that's a bit of a downgrade. He wants to stay in Europe. You know, I, and I understand no matter how much we plead, he doesn't want to come <laughs> Messi's through. Messi's here. Just come. That's what I'm saying. Nah. But he's not. Um, and according to source, it sounds like Benfica uh, from the per Portugal League is very close to picking him up for so what are we what are we buying him for or what what is what are they willing to buy him for my understanding is that the numbers that's been going around is 15 to 20 million dollars but sources saying that they're going to put a sell on fee for him so if benfica ever sells him they get a little bit of dinero um so yeah so i think people are saying 15 million is too low he should go for 20 how do you feel about that well, I, I mean, to get into it, I, in 2018, Miguel Amaron, he played for Atlanta United, helped him win the MLS championship. He got paid 21 mil, and this guy was going straight from MLS to uh, to uh, the English Premier League. So mm -hmm. we're talking about a guy in Tati who's already shown he could play at a top level out in Spain, which is a higher league than MLS. This guy should be worth more money. That's this guy true. scored four goals against Real Madrid. Did you hear Tati's interview? Uh, they were talking to him about like, hey, what do you think of your time at Girona, blah, blah, blah. And uh, how do you feel about being in La Liga? And he was like, you know, people are saying I'm the dude who scored against four against Real Madrid. Like, that's all they know me for <laughs> over there. That's all you need to be known. Dude, he can end <laughs> his career today and is like, yeah, I scored four again, goals against Real Madrid. Like, damn, you had an impressive career, bro. <laughs> oh, and I won the MLS championship. And then I'm like, damn, that's a little downgrade, bro. <laughs> um, but the, this Portugal league is is ranked eighth in global football rankings and mls is 16th we're not that far off we're not that far away we don't know what the margin is between 8 and 16. we didn't do the math on that so <laughs> <laughs> no it's not that crazy i mean the the good thing i guess is that benfica won their league this year 
Uh, so they're going to play in Champions League. Right? That's fire. So that is fire. He could play in Champions League. That's huge. That is that huge. is a huge selling point. If I was Tati and I had the chance to play in Champions League, it doesn't get bigger than that. But I've also heard rumors that West Ham might be trying to sign him. And, I mean, if you think about it, then he gets to play with Nate the Great, the Wonder Kid. <laughs> uh, that's a Ted Lasso reference for you who don't watch that. So uh, I don't know. Like, if you got the chance to play with the – middle of the pack was ham team or the number one team in portugal where are you going well english uh, the premier league is number one in in all of football so i mean i would want to probably go to west ham because you're gonna have more eyeballs more eyeballs are watching premier league every week versus uh the portuguese league let's just be real mm -hmm. but champions league you can't beat that i mean so it it i mean there's a it's a no lose situation for him right <laughs> the guy's gonna get paid more money and he's gonna go to a bigger better team like i don't know how you lose in that situation yeah i'm surprised he wants to leave Girona so bad so my understanding is that he didn't want to go back to Girona either so i'm not sure Dati, just... Dati's always stepped up bro it's always the next thing for him he doesn't settle on just mediocrity and that's what makes him so good that he... is what makes him so good that's what got him all those yellow and red cards <laughs> but at the same time if that's true then i think he should go to west ham not to the portugal league i'm sure there's a bunch if there's like scrubs on the bottom of the premier league i'm sure there's even more scrubs but at, on the bottom of uh the portuguese but league. is west ham really gonna pay as much as um benefica i don't know i don't know i don't i wouldn't think so i think they are they're a bigger squad they have more options well i don't even know if they're a bigger squad yeah i can't even tell you that I know West Ham plays in Premier League, but you could still be a bigger squad in a smaller division. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I don't know. I hope you go to West Ham, Tati. I don't know about Benfica. I don't feel like that's not a huge step up from MLS. Champions League, Papa. Yeah, if you're on the first round, that's going to be a real short town time in the Champions <laughs> it League. It doesn't matter. You got eyeballs watching you. That's, that's too dope. Yeah, but that's once. It's going to be maybe a few games that year versus bro every saturday people be, are gonna be watching you if you play at west ham he could be with us playing conca cap champions <laughs> that's <laughs> true that's true or uh leagues cup leagues cup is popping bro. we need some or, help. or open cup <laughs> <laughs> nah <laughs> <laughs> there's there's lots of cups to be played out here and there is that nobody cares about but <laughs> <laughs> there's cups to be played for i think the i think the concap cup though that's worth something and yeah. then you get to play in the world cup and that's worth something I'm talking about cups james sands just got promoted to play for gold cup for the Ooh, u.s yeah. men's national team Ooh, that's dope i like it that's not this weekend is it oh i don't know when it is but i know it's gonna happen soon Oh, man, I hope that doesn't mean he's not here this weekend because that'd be very sad. That'll mess up our lineups for the future. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get into this uh, summer. We, we're in the trade rumors right now because we don't want to talk about the game. Let's get into some trade rumors. We have the summer transfer window opening up July 5th, guys. And, do you know, we're, we're going to the main primary source who has everything we need about NYCFC signings. And we're going with NYCFC source. And they're saying that we might be able to get this French striker. He's 22 years old. Antonio. Uh, no, I'm probably Anton Baron. I don't know. I'm probably saying his name. <laughs> but <laughs> he's played for the Bulgarian first division. He had 14 goals. There was six assists in 27 games played. Does somebody like this get you excited? I mean, it fills that striker role we need so badly. It does. I mean, honestly, this kid out of the other ones that I've heard we might sign is not someone that I know very well. And so maybe I mean, just having any striker, honestly, at this point kind of gets me excited. Uh, so I'm glad they're looking at strikers. But anything important, this kid, I really don't know too much about. I, do you think this could have been one of the people what Roberto was talking about? I mean, what's interesting is I think we're about to mention two other strikers that they're looking at. And Roberto said that he expects them to sign two strikers. So oh, we might be getting multiple uh, 
signings then here. Yeah, that's what I think too. All Maybe. right, so, so let's get into the next one then. So next uh, rumor we have. So this one's an interesting one just because we like the drama and we like to see how it all plays out. Eek uh, or Ike Ugbo? Do you know how to say this guy's name? I have no idea. All right. Well, he's a 24-year-old Canadian who actually plays for the national team, I think, off and on. Mm -hmm. And play, he played for the French League. Had a, He only had two goals in 25 games. Yeah, I seen some of his start times. He didn't start fully the whole game. He didn't play the whole game. He got subbed in some of those games. But two goals in 25 minutes is, uh, in 25 games is not something to write home about. That is very true. And not only that, but at the same time, his team got relegated. So wait, did they get relegated while he was on the team? Yeah, this this past year he got relegated. Damn, that's bad. That is bad. <laughs> but the thought process is was it because his team wasn't good and and he could be the superstar from the team? So I don't know. But the the what if you saw here from the tweet, they saw him in New York with way too many suitcases to just be a weekend trip. And then, um, bro, he just he travels he travels heavy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you analyzing how much suitcases he has? Well, what was interesting was I think it was Brenda Cahill or Cohen, on Twitter. On Twitter, okay. She then posted a picture um, on the same day that uh, RSL uh, NYC was playing RSL, and he looked like he was a mountain. He looked like he wasn't in New York anymore, and he was in like some mountain ranges. That might potentially be Real Salt Lake. So they're saying, you know, wait, wait, but does him. that mean he's going to sign with Real Salt Lake or he wanted to see the team play? I, I think maybe he wants to see the team play. Bro, and if you saw the he, team play, we're he screwed. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm taking my flight back to where's uh, Canada. I'm done. <laughs> So yeah, he but he might as well. He probably prefer to live in the wildfires than in New York right now. That's how bad we're playing. <laughs> He picked a bad time to come, man. First the fires, then he had to uh, watch that performance on our offense. That's, uh... So she tracked the flight? What? She did something, man. I don't know how she got Yo, that Elon Musk is going to be pissed. <laughs> Remember when people were tracking his flight? He owns Twitter now. He's going to be like, banned. You're done. <laughs> I think he still banned that guy. He like unbanned him and then banned him. The guy who was like following his That was a flight. jerk move. That was a jerk move. He should have been able to have that. So but don't ban us. Elon, I know you listen to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The next signing, which is a big one, if if it's possible, Adam Bojang. He's a 19-year-old. I don't know what nationality he is. Also, I think it's Odama. But I, I mean, oh, I, Adama. I don't know. We can't even pronounce our oh, own players' yeah, names. Adama, Adama. I said Adam. Like, it was just A-D-A-M. Yeah. Um, but this dude is what we're hearing is a young dude. 19 years old, scored twice in the under, under 20. 22 World Cup, right? Under 20 World Cup. Uh, no. Oh, is it under 20? Yeah, under 20 World Cup. And um, I hear a beast. I hear, uh, actually, I think it's on the, oh, no, no, no. What I hear is that not only is NYCFC looking at him, but uh, Crystal Palace was looking at him. Chelsea was looking at him. And a third team that I cannot remember. Oh, Liverpool. So, so you're saying of... there's no shot we sign this guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're basically well, telling me. Well, my right understanding now. is that like the offer for him is like three million dollars. And so maybe those teams aren't willing to pay for that. I don't think he's that good versus us who might be a little desperate. So maybe we'll go a little over asking price. Mm, I would still be like, I would go under if I was him. I'd go on there and play for Liverpool, but you won't get as much burn. And I get you like, maybe it's not his time to be in the Premier League, get some more time where you could then become the guy. Exactly. And we're a great place to start that. Exactly. Be the guy over here, man. New York is popping. Yeah, I was I was actually hearing rumors. It's not rumors. It's not like there's any source or any credible information of this. But we kept talking about Pep and possibly playing with NYCFC. 2026 it might be actually a realistic thing when we have our own stadium any shot you think that's possible hell yeah he's coming here <laughs> yeah, yeah. i did hear that he said he didn't want to renew his contract with man with, city with man city well he's definitely not coming here right now i'll tell you that well one. not right now but i think he only has what two years or a year left on his contract i don't know i, I heard that a little bit too two years Maybe. he's done everything for that team already but like at this point, what do you not have? 
an MLS Cup. <laughs> a U.S. Oh, Open Cup. The most coveted prize ever, bro. <laughs> exact supporter shield. <laughs> he's coming over here. He's, he's cleaning the house, bro. He'd probably go to like Inter Miami, bro. Stop, <laughs> stop. I don't know how many DP slots does Inter Miami have. They're gonna have ten by the end <laughs> of this season, bro. <laughs> I legitimately heard that they were. I I just saw this like maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. But there's another player from Barcelona that they are trying to pick up, and it's between a Saudi team or Inter Miami. Oh, well, I, that's crazy. First of all, mm -hmm. I wonder how they have enough money to afford this guy <laughs> when they were just having like, weren't they being like uh, investigated? Yeah, investigated for like the way they were handling their money and all like these signings and everything. But now they got messy, bro. And they gave up so much money when they gave up superstar Pellegrini <laughs> that uh, they have all his available cap space. now. Well, you know, Bruce Arena, um, New England Revolution head coach, they asked him about it, like, oh, like, do you think it's a little weird that Inter Miami, like, was just being investigated and now they signed somebody like Messi? And he's like, give him an extra D DP spot. I don't care. Like, this is so good for the league, basically. I'm paraphrasing, but he was like, it, it doesn't matter. This is great for the league. And what's great for the league is great for everybody. Like, like I don't. I don't think it's a problem. Yeah. And it's funny that he even cared. I thought he was going to be like, I don't give a shit. The guy's always like with this, the most nonchalant <laughs> attitude of all time. Well, he kind of started off like, I don't. And then the guy kept pressing him. He's like, fine, I'll answer your damn question. <laughs> <laughs> even though he looks very reluctant to ever answer anybody's question. I, I always say this dude, which is so funny that he plays for New England Revs. Uh, oh, he reminds coaches. Yeah, he coaches the red team. Here's like the Bill Belichick of MLS, isn't <laughs> oh, I he? No, it just kind of fits into his role. All my man needs is to tear the sleeves <laughs> off his hoodie. No, and just wear wear the hoodie during <laughs> the game like that. Like <laughs> I know coaches, I, uh, soccer coaches don't wear the headset, but he should just put one on. <laughs> <laughs> like, who are you talking? <laughs> the goalkeeper. Yeah, what if you had oh. that? Like, you had an ear in one of the players. Like, yeah, that would be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool. I like that. Busquets. Busquets is who they're uh might be getting I'll into act, Miami. I'll act like I know who that is. He's good. <laughs> He's good. So we shall see. Bar what no, you think Barcelona ownership is gonna let anybody else go to Inter Miami? Bro, Barcelona's gonna file for bankruptcy this <laughs> year, bro. I don't know if they have bankruptcy in Spain, but if they do, that's what's gonna happen with that team. They're gonna have nobody. Did you also hear? I mean, we're here talking international news now, but because we're an MLS podcast, but Mbappe is not going to sign with PSG. Well, he's I think he's played this card before and then he gets way more money from PSG. So I, this might be another like I'm about to get mad money from you again. You think so? <laughs> I think so. Neymar, I mean, Neymar is going to leave. Oh, Neymar was no, he was, Neymar was in Miami last week. How he do was you know this? Bro, he was because he was at the Heat game. Oh, he was at the Heat game. He's chilling with Jimmy. He, he's chilling with Jimmy. He's out here telling Messi to go to Miami. Bro, this team might be ridiculous. This team might be ridiculous. <laughs> he might go play for Orlando. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, one, no one wants to go to Disney World. You know, that's the whole thing with Neymar is all he wants to do is party. There's like the party capital of the world is Miami. He could be like the Gareth Bale. Go to clubs at night and then just show up for the MLS Cup. Bro, I don't even think. I, we got to find out where Inter Miami is playing in the interim. But I'm pretty sure it's not Miami. Or how far it is from the actual like party life in Miami. What do you, what do you think is like an hour away from Miami? Yeah, bro, they're gonna fly him from Miami to the That's stadium. True. They every... got a lot more money than we do. Exactly, <laughs> Beckham owns that team, bro. Um, is there any other transfer rumors? Anything we need to bring up before this? I think you know what I thought was a little interesting. First of all, first of all, we are. This is like tied to this and not tied to this. We are owned by City Football Group. I'm okay we didn't get messy, but how come we can't get any of these other dudes? Can we can we do something here? I think it's a little ridiculous that uh, I'm hearing all these huge names during the RSL game. They kept bringing up uh, uh, this dude who got signed. Arango. Arango. Yeah. Uh, like every five minutes. That, kid's, that guy's a stud. Oh, of course, he's Colombian. That's why. <laughs> Colombian <laughs> from Medellin. He's going to dominate, bro. Yeah, he is going to dominate. He might but, change that. Change. And RSL let us know that. Or the broadcast let us know <laughs> that every five minutes. But, um, you know, he was available. He's young. He I mean, he didn't play How so How much did they great. sign him for? 
nine million, I believe. That's a we that's a pretty money. penny. You know what though? I, we got oil money. That's what I don't understand. People are like, even with the Dotti thing, they're like, oh, we're only gonna get fifteen million or twenty million. It's it's CFG. They have a bajillion dollars. It doesn't matter. The money that we get from, to me, I mean, maybe it's like a principal thing. Like, Dati should just be worth more, and that's what we want more. But for our salary, for like, can we pay p- people? Like, bro, it doesn't matter. Mm, yeah. Our salary cap is what, $9 million, I believe, in MLS? Something no, tiny like that? That's really that tiny? It's small. That's pretty bad. It is pretty bad. And then, and then pretty much, that's, that's how that's, but, but, with the DP signings, you can sign whatever you want. Yeah. And only like 250 of it, I think, or 500K goes to your, oh, salary, so your cap. salary cap. Got yeah. It. So I don't know. But well, everybody's CFG saying like with the addition of Messi, this is probably the best time to overhaul like uh, it, the salary cap and all these wages. Like this is when you should do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, then there's probably some truth to that. But at the same time, I think we also love this league because there's parity, right? That is true. And I just to like be clear, we, I actually looked it up. The salary cap. This is official. Twenty twenty three. Twenty twenty three. Look us up after this. <laughs> is boardroom TV? Yeah, great source. It's bro. A great source. <laughs> All right, this looks like a legit thing. Five point two million dollars per team, and that's an increase from the year before, which was four point nine million. That's insane, bro. That is insane. So, and and with the DP. It only hits your max at 651. Crazy. So, point is, I forgot why, why I mentioned this. Uh, to change salary rules? Yeah, yeah. Point is, come on, guys. Let's make some moves. We, we, we have the money to make changes. Oh, and then the second thing that I wanted to bring up was, the was I think it was NYCFC Source that posted a tweet that, like, front office wants to spend money. CFG doesn't want to spend money. That it's not CF, not CFG. Yeah, CFG doesn't want to spend money at NYC, NYCFC. That Bahia, when they bought him, became their baby. And because of all the MLS constraints and all the rules, that they would rather spend their money somewhere else. Wait, which league is Bahia? Where, where do these guys play? No idea. Isn't that where Asante was playing right beforehand? Oh, which I think is uh, Argentina. Yeah, it's, from a, it's one of those South American. Yeah, regions. exactly. So, uh, yeah, Bahia FC plays in Serie A, which I don't know. Yeah. Oh, you see Santi's here. Uh, a picture of him. And that is in El Salvador. Awesome. It's one of the South Americans. Oh, capital city of the Brazilian state of Bahia. I think it's Brazil. Brazil. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> we're, very, we're much more uh, fluent at MLS slash NYCFC. Point is, CFG, you got to step up, man. You're getting the stadium. Can't just be the stadium that's the news i think we need some roster updates i agree um so let's see if any of these free agents pan, pan out we did see another uh tweet from hudson river blue and uh one of these uh mls correspondents has us as the dark horse to come back as long as we get a striker what do you think of that um yeah, I mean, I think we're a lot more dangerous with the striker. That's clear. <laughs> then less. I mean, do I want us to be the dark horse for sure? I want us to come back and win a bunch of games and be a dangerous team. Uh, is that our only issue? Probably not. We got injuries. We got banged up players. Uh, we got substitutions not happening at the right time. We got starters who probably shouldn't be starting. Um, so I think we have a multitude of issues than just one. Agreed, but I'm glad that a little bit of what we've been saying is being said by pundits who do this professionally. Uh, because right, I think what we've been hearing is a striker is not going to solve all our problems. Uh, but I do think, and we saw it again in the RSL game, we've seen it in this stretch of draws and losses, is that we get the ball in the box, near the box, we are not scoring goals. And that MLS soccer... Uh, you know, pundits are saying, look, I think they get a striker. They can raise up the ranks. Um, it's I don't know. It, to me, it, it validates what we've been saying on this pod for a long time. We're not just cushing homers. <laughs> there is some knowledge behind the thought process here. Um, but um, 
that's still a long time, man. It's not till July 5th. We got a few games till then. So please, please some wins. We need some wins before uh, July comes around. Yes, we do. I, the crazy thing is, you know what's so funny is Inter Miami just got whooped, and you know they're <laughs> waiting for Messi. It's like you better start doing something before you guys get too. I mean, the problem is there's freaking nine playoff spots, so really you can always come back. That's true. Which is stupid, by the way. But whatever. Yeah, I didn't realize it was two. It was seven playoff spots last year. Yeah, it makes a world of a difference to have two extra ones. Yeah, exactly. It it doesn't make any sense. Although it's a it's a playoff game between those eight and nine, I think, and then they play it like a play in. Yeah, to play in. Home. Gotcha. So that's not too too bad, but still, it's still bad. It's still bad. Go back to seven, man. This is too much at the nine. All right, time to get into some RSL versus NYCFC. This was just a boring match. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know, it's a zero-zero draw, but seeing Barassa be a stud for ninety minutes after people keep saying Barassa isn't the answer, I'm talking to you. What's, oh, I don't know who you're hating on. Stop hating on no. people. The fact that we needed Barassa to be a stud for ninety minutes is an issue. It is that an issue. Is an Can issue. we start with the good first, and then we move to the bad? That Barassa is a stud is something that we can start with and say, "Hey, there was one positive but you're in like this gloating game." Gloating about Barassa being a stud. The fact that Barassa needed to save us time and time again that game is terrible. It. It. I mean, it is terrible. Who? Stop trying to call out somebody from their. No, tweet. no, but she <laughs> listens to us a lot, so I think she would think it's funny. But I can't remember. I'm forgetting let's, your Instagram. Let's, let's get oh, into... Sue Ellen Randolph. We kept putting Maddie, Maddie, Maddie on our uh, tweet, on uh, one of her tweets. She's I'm a, watching you, Sue. She's a Maddie Ice fan. She is a big Maddie Ice well, fan. Maddie but Barasa was a stud. No, he did great. Yes. But her tweet was actually funny, though. It was funny. What was it? Well, I forgot. What did the word say after, like, the tweet? After he, like, showed his face? I don't remember. Uh, I said, like to see the Maddie one that she sung. I said, like... Come on, bro, or something like that. Yeah, she wasn't. Ha- she's not happy that we're uh, Barasa fans, but Barasa lived up to his stud title that we've officially given him this year. So that's the only good news that came out of this game. <laughs> yes, that's the only. Let Let's look at the lineup. Uh was this the best lineup to have on the field? Well, let's look at the lineup for the people who aren't who are listening to the yes. pod. We had Barasa, the stud. Kufre, Sands, Morales, Santi Rodriguez, Pereira, Turnbull, Talis Magno, Keaton Parks, Justin Hack, and Ofaro. And just to give some context, Chanel was out because of yellow card accumulation. Tiago Martins is supposedly out for five to six weeks. Um, uh, months. No? I thought it was weeks. Uh, well, it's months a long injury. The, if it's months, it's the, there's no, we don't get them back that's this true, season. That's true, that's so true. it's definitely weeks. Um, and so to compensate for not having great players in the back, we put Sands in the back, uh, Hack in the back, and Alfaro. Alfaro, I thought, actually played pretty well. He had some uh, decent saves. He saved one goal. Uh, it hit his ribs. Oh, yeah. Um, that and- might have been a lucky one, to be honest. But he was running back, so he did his job. No, but out of all of his performances, he's played four times this year. This was his best performance. Um, yeah. And uh, what what really caught me off guard when this lineup was Turnbull. Like, I get Micha was injured. He was recovering. Uh, and Turnbull played decent the last two games because he started for him. Yeah. Uh, but he was terrible this game. Yeah, um, he's slow, bro. Yeah, he's... And, and his crosses are... Oh, awful. Awful. And he had like, a few where was he it had, going? I don't know what he's doing. Did man. he always play like the the back, the right back, left back? Like I think so. It didn't look like <laughs> <laughs> those crosses were so bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I don't get why Micha didn't start. And we didn't go to the press conference, so we couldn't ask the coach. I'm trying to figure out that's like a right thing to be asking the coach. Like, yo, why did you make these substitutions? And why did you start these why guys? Why is it not a right thing? I don't know. Is that like, is that rude? That's no, not rude. All right, I we got to start asking these questions. We got to start asking the hard-hitting questions at the press no, conference. because yeah, why start them? It, it just what was the reasoning? What did you see out there? Is the guy tired? I mean, usually it's always the same answer. Oh, we wanted to give rest to the other guy, so we started him. Micha's still banged up. 
So you're kind of going to get the generic answer versus I think Turnbull's better than Mija. I mean, but he wouldn't say that because that's an idiotic thing to say. Well, I mean, he did start him, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out why, man. So maybe uh, we'll see who he well, starts Well, you know weekend. who got their first start in a long time? Talis Magno. Oh, yeah, that's true. No, he didn't show anything either. I, he had our one shot on goal. So, I mean, I wouldn't. I, he was, I guess, our best player. <laughs> no, he wasn't our best player. Obviously, it was uh, uh, Barraza. But, I mean, he yeah, had our one dangerous shot. I know. I know that doesn't speak for much because we. Let's look at the stats. I mean, if we just look at the stats, it really was a terrible game. Five shots, one shot on target. Yeah, we won possession. Yeah, same old story. We win <laughs> possession. Still don't do anything with the ball near the box. It's uh, it's just the same story over and over again. Yeah, although I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I always feel like I'm I'm defending the club, but I just feel like yes. It was a draw, and yes, we didn't do well offensively, but we had. Yeah, I don't really have anything good to say. Actually, <laughs> I think uh, I think the only thing I'd say is that we that we came out with a draw. We were really fortunate uh, <laughs> because there were oh, they had twenty shots, four were on target. But you know what I thought was really interesting? Uh, the RSL broadcasters, uh, because that's what I'm going to call them, RSL broadcasters. All they did was talk <laughs> about RSL the entire game. They called uh, Talis Magno, Magno Talish, uh, uh, which is bad. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, they said that the reason RSL hasn't been able to do well is because they don't have a striker. And I <laughs> well, just they thought, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they solved it. Uh, but it's just it's so crazy that it might not just be coaching. It might be missing a striker. Because they had some weapons out there, bro. Diego Luna looked like a monster. I mean, Severino hit one off the goalpost, and he was he had a couple shots. Exactly. And somehow they had 20 shots and could only figure out how to get less than 25% of them to even get close to that big-ass goal. Uh, <laughs> but I, at the same time, Barasa did a fantastic job. So I'm not taking away anything from Barasa. Um, but at the same time, they didn't have a striker. And they couldn't turn it around. They had a lot more opportunities than we did. And they did a lot better of a job crossing it in, getting in the box, making opportunities that we did, uh, but they didn't finish. And that's what it's all about is finishing. So maybe, maybe striker <laughs> plays a big part. Maybe. Um, O'Toole got something for Kufre. And uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess Kufre has been getting a lot of burn lately. So maybe he needed some rest. Yeah. I mean, my thing is it was a zero, zero draw. You want to keep, did you want to try to win this game, right? You still had an opportunity to take a point. And he definitely made the substitutions to say, I don't want to win the game. Like, he made a triple substitution, right? And he put in uh, Pellegrini for GP, Gray for Turnbull. For bro, Turnbull, you love Pellegrini. Also, what are you talking about? I do love Pellegrini, actually. But, bro, somebody said this on Twitter. It is so true. Is that They were like... um. Pellegrini runs like he has a parachute tied to his back. <laughs> it's so true. I don't know why he's so slow. <laughs> and he's fast for like the first second he's out there and then he's out of breath. Oh, man, you got to get on a Peloton and get that stamina. No, Turnbull, bro. It was like 10 minutes into the game and then he let one behind him and he's like, this, damn it. And he's like, I really got to run now. <laughs> he looked tired. Yeah, he he was looked getting, gassed. He was getting murdered back there. And they kept gassed. getting the ball past them. Yeah, so uh, Pellegrini um, just didn't do anything. And my thing is, GP was the only person who looked like a killer out there, as usual. And uh, and they took GP out. So I thought that wasn't a great move. Also, they didn't sub in Ledesma. Another question we didn't ask. What I did notice was that everyone else on the sideline, because they like pushed the sideline to see who like, could come into the game, uh, was doing their normal workouts. But Ledesma was using one of those uh, leg bands. So I'm not sure if he like still has think, some type of injury. No, it's that like kind of standard. If you're stretching, getting loose, you use your, the little leg band. You got Maybe. an injury before. I you... still got an injury. I'm still using the leg band. That's what I'm saying. Maybe it's maybe he's not 100%. I thought it was weird that Ledesma didn't come in the game. So maybe I'm trying to justify why not. And of course, no one asked them. Uh, well, we did not. You, did you actually listen to the press conference? I'm sure we would have heard if they asked them that question. 
I'm like, yeah, I don't know. You probably didn't listen. Well, I don't know. I didn't see any source. I wasn't even, I didn't even look at the post game recap. Too depressed for that. That's true. I, didn't, I don't know. So then don't talk out your okay. ass, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else from this game? I, I just feel like it was a game that just like it was in the Rockies, it was high in the mountains, and we fell flat. Yeah. Unlike the surface. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got nothing. I just, Good job, Barraza. I hope you keep uh, turning out clean sheets like that because that was a very impressive uh, game by him. Everyone else, you got to step up. <laughs> All right, Columbus Crew. We play on Saturday back at Yankee Stadium. A 3.30 game. We got another early game. I so like that's exciting. Early games. I can make it home by my bedtime. I know. I'm excited about that too. Okay. What do you got on Columbus Crew? All right, Columbus Crew, uh, eight wins, three draws, six losses this year. So that's uh, they're they're much higher in the division than we are. I think there are six. Actually, I did not verify that before this. I will. Uh, so I will talk slowly, so then you could pull that up. <laughs> um, and but what's a and Zalarian had a great goal last week. Uh, if you have not seen it, go see it. People are saying it might be the best goal of the year, which Ahmad has been put in a banger. So if it's better than that, you know it's good. Um, so go check it out. But the good news. In the final minutes, too. That was the crazy part. And right, right. Yeah, right at the final minutes of the game. Uh, is it six here? Yeah, it's six. They're yeah. in the six seed. So they're your six seed. Um, and but, but, big thing, Aiden Morris. Um, and Lucas Zalarian, two of their best players, won't be playing due to international leave. That's confirmed. That is confirmed. I hope it is. I confirmed it. That's I. Uh, you're you confirming things doesn't mean <laughs> anything for me. <laughs> so with Zalarian and Morris not playing, we have a chance. And what I've also confirmed is that in. 15 away games, Columbus Crew has a record of just two wins in their last 15 away games. And, but it says at least one goal has been scored by Columbus Crew in their last eight matches. Wait, so wait, good. in their last 15 away games, they have what? Uh, just two wins. Okay. And New NYCFC before this past <laughs> home trip was a fortress at home. So hopefully the fortress comes back. Uh, and without Zalarian and Aiden Morris, we have a good chance. I hope so. That's exciting. The only thing is now I don't know. I just checked. James Hans could potentially miss five games, depending on how far USMNT goes. Oh, wait. So is he not playing this weekend? It does. So on the Hudson River Blue article, it does not confirm whether he's going to be here or not this weekend. The tournament doesn't start till next week. Or at least the, that play doesn't start until next week, the first USA game. When's the first USA game? Do we know? Uh, I do not know off the top of my head. I'm sorry. Uh, but but to, uh, to keep talking about like this game and where we stand versus where Columbus Crew stands, bro, it's been – we played 17 games and we only have 18 points. We're oh. just above Chicago Fire and Miami, which is not saying much. We could like lose this game. And then if Miami and Chicago win, we're last in the division. That is possible, but we're not going to lose because we're home. <laughs> home hasn't been hasn't meant much because the last three games we've only at home we only got one point. And if we win this game and we have twenty one points, and the Red Bulls in Toronto and Chicago and Miami lose, <laughs> we're right back in it, baby. <laughs> we can only go up two spots versus the three spots, but sure. Hey, 11 is better than uh, 13. If, and if we look at the disparity between FC Cincinnati and us, which is number one in the division, they have 40 points versus our 18 points, and they've played the same amount of games. Bro, in general, I'm a positive poly, but I saw that a few days ago, and I was like, <laughs> damn, this is that insane. makes me feel bad. This is insane. Even I felt like Philadelphia Union was struggling, and they have 30 points this season. That's insane. Do you know last time we won at home? Sometime in April. No way. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, not one at home. One at all. Well, actually, we've only won at home, so it must have been at home. <laughs> but uh, 
But yeah, it was in April. This is depressing, bro. It is depressing. How are we get into this conversation? I now I'm know. sad. You got me sad. Let's get into I just, this lineup. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to say USA plays Jamaica Saturday, June 24th. So next week. So that... Sands, Sands could still make the oh, game. Bro, you think Sands... Nick Cushion cares? No, I mean, Nick Cushion <laughs> is getting them out there this week. But the inter but that's why it doesn't make sense that these guys might be out. But nah, but uh, well, Aiden Morris does play for the USA. Net. So he might be able to still get some burn. But, but Zalarian is definitely not playing because I think they have a game. Uh, he plays for Armenia. Ar- 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 Armenia. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a turn out uh, further away. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I don't know when uh, that game is, but I do know that it is soon. So he definitely is not going to be able to make it. Oh, yeah. Lat- Latvia. Uh, or Latvia. God, we can't pronounce nothing on this show. But <laughs> Latvia on Monday, June 19th. Oh, okay, okay. So that makes more sense. Yeah, so Zalarian's definitely not playing. That's good news for us. That is very good news for us because he's on the hype train right now. So he could be <laughs> go hyped in, in uh, Europe. All right. Let's get into lineups now. All right. So Chanel's back. Let's go. Be, so that's big news. So my thought process is we got Barasa back at goalkeeper because he's a goddamn stud, Sue. Because he's a stud. <laughs> and then we put Hack, which honestly, I didn't think Hack played very well last week. But but he had some amazing headers, bro. Like intercepting headers. It was outrageous what he did. But okay, so we got Hack, Chanel, Tony Afaro in the back. I, I think we're going to go, you know, 3-4-3 three, three again. And then Kufre on the left, Parks and Sands. If Parks is healthy, actually. We didn't do the midweek press conference yet because we're recording on Tuesday. So we don't know how he's doing. Uh, but if anything, you could put Morales in there. Micho on the right. Micho better be starting out. Better not see Turnbull out there. And then Talis, Santi, and GP. That is the lineup that we are predicting for this game. It is. Any the... thoughts on that? Where's Ledesma? That's what I... You know, I was thinking about that when I was putting this lineup together. But where do you put him? Who do you take out? I, you know what? Actually, if... I'm going to answer my own question. Well... If I had to... The way I'm seeing this play, I would take out Talis Magno for. Well, yeah, that's what we've been doing, right? No, we've had Jason there because we were playing a four-two-three-one type thing. That's what it was. We didn't have so many. No, then. And then who we didn't have in this game? Yeah, we're three center backs. So we. So yeah. No, then I would go back to the attacking forwards. Uh, We have Santi Perea. Ledesma and then well, yeah, let's so, get I mean let's get so you're gonna let you're gonna let Chanel Sh- and Tony Alfaro handle it in the back? That's the problem. Then you don't have hack in there. So you you would say I take think out I'm okay the... with that. I think I'm okay with that. I'd rather have more attacking guys. We're uh, the best offense, uh, the best defense is offense, <laughs> is your favorite saying. So <laughs> I know, but we haven't been able to produce offensively. So I don't know if I would do I that. Yes, but if we're controlling the ball, making dangerous runs, and we're at Yankee Stadium. Wait, are we playing at Yankee Stadium? Yes. I hope so. Yes, we are playing okay, at Yankee good. Stadium. Yes. I like day games at Yankee Stadium. Me too. Those but are the best. I, those are the best. Um, yeah, come on. Get attacking forwards up there. Okay. I, I'm, I mean, yes, it's a little suspect for just, you know, Tony Alfaro. I agree. A little scary. But we'll see what happens. I say give it a try. <laughs> let's go all out. Let's attack. Win a game at home. We need it. Like, let's not play conservative. We've played enough conservative uh, conservative ball. Let's let's get some some attacking forwards and score some goals. Make it a 3-1 game, 4-1 game. Make them pay for not having their superstars. I agree. I want some points at home, man. I miss being excited at home. I know. That's what I'm saying. We used to have an intensity at home. We would If we were down... We were hustling for the last 20 minutes. Like, it was nonstop. Like, we are going to get this goal into either tie this game or be ahead. And we don't have that anymore. And maybe that goes back to your last week discussion with, like, experienced uh, players versus non-experienced players on the attacking side. And and there that's um, Hudson River Blue, or the, the guy who... Uh, the MLS soccer person was like, oh, now the uh, NYCFC since last year have less uh, attacking forwards, uh, attacking passes moving forward. Let, let me see the exact thing. We have it here. Hold on. It Oh, look, they're also averaging more than 15 fewer forward passes per game without a reference point to stretch opposing defenses and provide an outlet for their uh, star half space players. 
New York City's have underwhelmed, but with a true striker, that might turn around. Mm -hmm. So we're averaging fewer touches than last year and averaging fewer forward passes. And I think this goes to us missing a talent, uh, a Maxi Morales who can always find the guy who needs to be found. Like, I feel like in the midfield, we get it in the midfield, boom, we pass it back. Then we play around it again. But I felt like Maxi would always find the guy who was open or yeah. you would get it into the middle. Then he knew the left back was going forward and you'd have a, a lob over the top. And yeah. we don't have that right now. Yeah. So I, I don't know how we fix it because Santi was never a true 10 and we wanted him to be a true 10. And, and he's I, the closest thing we have to a true 10. Yeah. I hope. Or Le, I mean, we have Ledesma actually. So that's not necessarily true. But between him and Santi, it's just. I, it just hasn't been gelling. Maybe with that true striker, then we'll have the centerpiece that then move. Yeah. Um, may, and maybe Santi will finally play that role better because I do think that Santi has grown up a lot this season. You can see a big change but, in him. Okay, that's a good question. If we get a striker, do you want Santi to go back to the wings? No, I want him at 10. Who else are we playing at 10? Ledesma. Nah. I want Santi at 10. I think Santi, if his focus was to distribute the ball, I think he could do it. And he had he had a really impressive the, the almost goal by Talis Magno this year or this game uh was a beautiful pass by Santi. And I've noticed that Santi's also been able to hold the ball better than he has in previous games. So I I'm seeing a little bit of growth in Santi, some maturity in Santi. I think his primary focus has to be at increasing his vision distributing the ball better but how are you supposed to do that with this squad that you have on offense so maybe if you get you know a striker then you could play that part i do wish we still had maxi though that could help us yeah, do that type it, of it for sure could help us that season's over too isn't it what season oh uh, wherever he's playing <laughs> no nah, he's not coming back to us he's definitely not on loan with us either so that would have been nice just come back for a little mini contract maxi, maxi we'll we take you. you he followed us and then unfollowed us on twitter that's messed up maxi he you got know, you know what we don't want you any bad boy no, back on the no, we want you bro <laughs> <laughs> just follow us again uh betting with bros what uh -huh. do we got money line what's going on all right we're well, our boys on fan duel think we're gonna uh potentially win this game we're at plus 115 They're idiots <laughs> no 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 wait we're at home we're at home uh plus 115 for nycfc to win plus 230 for the tie plus 200 uh for the columbus to win no oh yes yes and then negative 122 for the two and a half Okay, but uh -huh. my thought is, you gotta. To me, my lock is the tie no bet. We typically haven't lost, and at home, I think we only have one loss at home against the best team in the league, right? No, don't we have two losses? No, we had a draw, which felt like a loss. I think. No, we had a three-game home stretch, mm -hmm. and we only got one point from that. So we oh, had two losses. That's true. Against the two best teams in the league. Also, <laughs> uh, one of them had a 12th person, which was the ref. <laughs> so the negative 152 tie no bet. I mean, so the tie, which means if you tie, you, you get your money back. Uh, but if you win, you win. So that bet is negative 152. So it is a bit uh, expensive. But I say that's the lock for the week. A tie, no bet. So you'll get your money back if we tie. Exactly. I am not going with that. <laughs> <laughs> because I've gone with the tie, no bet. And they don't tie. They lose. <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm going to choose something, it's going to be over three goals. Wow. Um, I think it's going to be over three. Uh, so you don't think our stud Barasa is going to get a clean sheet? At home, I don't think with he's the gonna, drums. Nah, I don't. I don't think he's gonna get a clean sheet. I think they'll score. I think we'll score. We'll score more, but they'll score, and then that'll lead to a maybe three-one win. I'm even thinking four-one. I think we explode this game. I know it's crazy, <laughs> bro. Do you know how many goals we've had? I don't Overall. even know. But if I had to guess, we have had a minimal. The last time we've to accumulate how many games we've had to get four goals has got to be <laughs> a ton of games. Uh, yeah, but I, I'm, I think over two and a half is the lock. I mean, even though over two and a half is still minus money. So you would think that 
uh, Vegas thinks the same thing. Maybe. Maybe you got to go back seven games, six games to have four goals combined between all the games. Yeah, you're looking at the worst stretch of this team so far. Also, I just like to mention that the negative two and a half was negative 122. So it's not like that much favored versus the under two and a half is plus 100. Okay, so you're very confident in this tie no bet. Let's say you had a hundred dollars. I'm going to bet the whole hundred dollars that the tie no bet. You know what? I'll put it in the bet right now. I'll put in the bet <laughs> right now while we do this live. I don't know how much money I have in my FanDuel you account. You definitely don't have $100. I, <laughs> I do got $100 in my FanDuel account. At least $100. Okay, fine. Oh, $100.93. Oh, my God. And I'm betting guy's... all on the tie no bet all right, right you, now you on need... television for the podcast, not you television. Need, you need proof of your bet, and it needs to be placed on social media to confirm <laughs> that this is true because nobody believes you bro you know okay all right i will i will i will put it up all we'll right put it your, up what's your final score prediction two zero nycfc all right i'm going three one the boys win i got a little crazy with the four <laughs> <I'll admit that. laughs> three one the boys win danny's putting his bet right now if you tag along, just know that we do not promote betting. <laughs> and Danny's we uh, don't promote betting. We have a betting section on the show. What are well, you we don't promote about? your picks because your picks are shaky as hell. <laughs>